Good day. So we continue straight away from question 49. A five year old boy was progressively getting worse compared to the previous two months. Chest test which had shown right middle lobe collapse. Tuberculosis skin test was strongly positive. What is the most characteristic finding in primary tuberculosis? The acid was primary tuberculosis, so your consideration here is not about dissemination or complications such as cavity formation and so on. This is not pneumonia. So this is uh, a, in permanent tuberculosis, one major thing that you have there, you can have the per, uh, paratracheal lymph node enlargement. Like at the level of the long island, you have the lymph nodes there being enlarged. So that's a typical finding in permanent tuberculosis. A girl is 12 years old. She was overcooled. Now she's complaining of pain in suprapubic area. So I mentioned this earlier that if it is cystitis, they will tell us about the suprapubic area. Frequent pain urination by small portions is rare. Temperature, Patanaski symptom is negative. Why? Because it's not at the level of the uh, uh, the kidneys. This is we are talking about the bladder here. Urine analysis. You can see so what diagnosis is the most probable this is acute cystitis acute cystitis so acute cystitis the girl is 11 years old she's ill for one month has butterfly type rash on her face so i don't think we should take much of our time anymore butterfly rash is always lupus always lupus if it is corpus pneumonia as we said we said corpus pneumonia has one uh, rash on one like flushing not like flushing on one side of the face. So, an infant, one year old, on the third day of common cold, and developed inspiratory stridor, was voice and backing cough. You see, this combination backing cough, inspiratory stridor, and so on is finger for is is typical for laryngotracheal bronchitis, and that is croup. One of the most common cause of it is a uh, para influenza virus. So physical examination revealed you could read further, but the question is what disease does the infant have? So backing cough in spiritual student was voice is typical for a uh, laryngotracheal bronchitis. So and that is this option, acute infectious group due to viral laryngotracheitis. A newborn ate three days with hyperbilirubinemia, I see, so elevated, will be following. There were severe jaundice with poor suckling, hypothermia, hypo, hypotomia, hypodynamia, little bit later, periodic excitation, neonatal convulsions, and neonatal primitive fluorescence loss are noted. It's as if the child is beginning to develop carnicterus. You know, carnicterus is uh, we have the bilirubin being, being, um, being transported to the passing to the blood brain barrier, reaching to the brain and causing neurological damages. Now, physical examination of this convergence squint, rotatory nystagmus, and so on. How do you explain this uh, condition? So, this is a condition of encephalopathy that is due to hyperbilirubinemia, that is carnicterus. A two year old child, the child complains of worse voice, this now with obstructed inspiration, so much like inspiratory stroke as well. This disease started three days ago from dry cough and so on. If you read further, can you see parainfluenza virus has been detected in nasopharynx lavage? What is the most likely diagnosis? Again, this is as previous question. This is acute laryngotracheitis. What examination should be conducted? You know, I said sometimes you can, when you have a long question, long questions are not always difficult, but when you have a question, sometimes you can read the last sentence first to know what your attention. So they want us to know uh, what method of examination here. Yeah. In a patient that is having osteagia, when you have a patient that is having osteagia, and you could see from the blood work that we have 87% lymphocytes. So we are suspecting uh, a form of blood cancer. And in three year old, you know, at this level, most commonly in children, you have acute lymphoblastic leukemia, one of the most common cause of cancers in them. So what do you do on suspicion? It's standard puncture. Standard puncture. That's the best test to do in condition of leukemia. I've got test done on a newborn at uh, first and the fifth minute after they give the result of seven to eight scores. During delivery, there was short-term difficulty with extraction of tudor gadu. After birth, child had prosima 
extremity dysfunction and arm couldn't be raised from the side. You see, you could demonstrate this that when your shoulder is turned inward and the elbow is flexed, so there's forearm pronation, osteoporosis. So what is the clinical? This is uh, typical for L palsy. This is a description of L palsy. In L palsy, the C5, C6 root is, is affected and you have this exact manifestation. The only thing that you need to know, to, there are three major diagnoses that we should know under this bed trauma is air palsy, clump K palsy, and then to know inferior obstetric uh, uh, paralysis. So this is a condition of air palsy. Look at the description. The other one for clump K is going to give us uh, claw fingers. Claw fingers, when we get there, we recognize that. Examination of a nine month old girl revealed skin pallor. Cyanosis during excitement. Percussion revealed transverse dilatation of cardiac borders. Auscultation revealed systolic murmur to the left of breastbone. When they are telling you about a systolic murmur that is had on the left side of the sternum, that is the breastbone, in the third, fourth intercostal space, if you find the interventricular septal defect in the option, is most likely the correct answer because that is where you are going to hear that murmur. So the murmur is conducted above the whole cardiac region to back and so on. This is defect of the interventricular septum. If you have it around this region, 30 to 40 intercostal space, and to be a systolic murmur. A worker was temporarily off work because of illness for 16 days. For 16 days, was under outpatient treatment. The doctor in charge issued a sick li uh, list for four, for five days first for five days then prolong it for 10 days who can further prolong this sick list of this patient you see after 10 days uh in this case it will be um it will be the doctor in charge of the case together with the head of the department so when we get to uh, hygiene and uh social medicine i guess of god then we'll be seeing those days actually more than 10 days they were talking about all these uh, medical expert committees but we don't have something like that in this one so it will be this doctor together with the department notice this other option is doctor in charge with permission no it's not the permission both of them are giving it together not just permission 13 year old patient was treated in dermatological hospital for atrophic dermatitis he was discharged in condition of clinical remission what recommendations should the doctor give to prevent exacerbations? So the, the you know such atopic dermatitis, like since it's, the patient is appearing in a dermatological hospital, you are talking about contact with different agents, and most of all these agents are usually synthetic. So it's to advise the patient to use natural creams, like oils and different things that are better for them. So on twenty first day after appearance of. Uh, vesicles chicken box wash a seven year old developed atasia again when we say we have a varicella or chicken pulse in history with neurological manifestation the only complication that they are expecting us to choose there is encephalitis encephalitis an eight year old boy suffering from hemophilia was undergoing transfusion of packed red cells suddenly he felt pain behind the breastbone and in the lumbar area you can see patients that are going to transition you can see the actual we talk about something like this in when we're doing internal medicine so what how do we treat this uh complication a sort of immunological reaction in these patients in this case is spreading so long it's spreading so long it's an autoimmune reaction uh, with tissue rejection in this patient so pregnant so long three year old is having type 1 diabetes and patient is having upper or smaller coma which laboratory findings are calcified for such condition? Please notice that upper osmolar coma is different from uh, uh, ketonemia. That you have high level of ketone bodies, uh, ketoacidosis, and you have high level of ketone bodies in the blood. But here in upper osmolar coma, it's more about the concentration of the glucose in the blood. So, what are you going to find? You are going to find hyperglycemia. And that's what is increasing the osmolality that is further leading to coma in this patient. They are going to have hyperglycemia without ketonemia. As you may attend that the patient is having ketoacidosis, then we need to be with ketonemia. But it is simply hyperosmolar coma. Hyperosmolar coma is simply caused by hyperglycemia without fat necessarily being broken down. 
a three-year-old child was playing uh, in a play with playpen and suddenly developed paroxysmal mark cough and shortness of breath. See, what particular condition can be suspected? When you tell you that a child is playing with something, just and there is respiratory manifestation, that is always foreign body. That is always foreign body. So this case of foreign body in the respiratory tract, the only other question that is similar to it we had was post-obstructive arterial epitaxis. That is, after some period of obstruction, the other part of the lung that could not have conduction of air another will collapse. So it's still like a further part of physiology and other aspects. So we stop here for now before my computer or starts itself again.